I'm talking really about the, the negative bias. Talk about what is that and how does it impact us in life? And of course, then we'll move to today's practice. What we are looking to achieve is peace of mind. Peace of mind to move through life day by day by day. Slowing down the noise, the chatter, the negative feedback loop. We've spoken about the narrator and understanding how do we dial that down? But let's just understand a little bit about the human anatomy, the, the mechanisms within the body and the brain to help us survive. One of the key things that we use and have used for 200,000 years as a race is the negative bias. It's the principle under which the mind will look for the negative things in whatever it's presented with. And it looks for the negative things in order to preserve homeostasis, in order to preserve this body in its form so that it can survive. And why does it look to survive? Well, if you think about it principally, procreation. That's really what we're all here to do and the reason why we're still here after 200,000 years. So we may have huge amounts of cognition that we've formulated as our prefrontal cortex has evolved only in the last 10,000 years. So in the previous 190,000 years, we were more primal and we needed to survive. So a good example of understanding the negative bias is to bring it into modern day life. Last summer, myself and my family, we took a vacation in California. We were staying just outside San Francisco and at the back of the houses where we were, there was a beautiful trail that led off into the mountains. So it was perfect for me to go running every morning. Now, when I would go running on the trail in California, I was obviously aware that it was a little bit different to running on the trails in Ireland. Principally, there are snakes, spiders, and things that can actually inflict pain because in Ireland, we don't have anything like that. So I set off and I would run every day, but my body and my mind knows that I'm now in an environment that's very much different to my home environment. And what I have to look out for when I'm running in Ireland is a jagged pavement, is a dangerous position for my foot to land, the undulation of the terrain as I move through the mountains, but I'm not really looking out for a possible threat to my life from a snake or a dangerous spider. And as I would run on several occasions um, over our time in California, and we were there for four or five weeks, I would see a rope or something that might be in some way mildly resembling a snake, maybe behind some grass or behind a tree or behind some rubbish. And my mind would instantly look and see a snake and alert me. And I'd see it and I'd go, oh, that could be a snake. So the negative bias was going, be careful, look out threat to life possibly around here. So I'd see it. And when I would see it, then the move of course would be into that fight, flight and freeze way of behaving. But I would see it, I would be able to use the advantages of my own practices in mindfulness and meditation, take a breath, take a good look at it, and then realize it's not a threat, and move forward. Now, 
that is the difference between me seeing the point of issue or danger, the stimulation, the time at which I decide to then make the response and what is in the space in the middle. So the stimulation, I see something mm, that may be a snake. Instead of turning straight away and running backwards as fast as I could, I could take a breath and then I could take my action. So the space between the initial stimulation and the point at which I take my action gives me the capacity to take a good look at this from a proper prefrontal cortex, fully cognitively engaged mind. Ah, there's no threat to danger. It's okay. And what becomes interesting around this negative bias is that for you and I in our daily life, it's exploited hugely by other people. That could be the apps on your phone, but also the news channels. If you think about it, the psychology that's understood in respect to the negative bias by the news channels is huge. You don't see the front headlines positive news. They don't lead with a wonderful story that's happened today in the world. Because they know that the human being and the mind is looking for the negative news story. The negative bias wants to lean into the negative news. It wants to worry about what could be a potential threat. So the news channels always have deeply theatrical music. You know, it's a real dun 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 when the news headlines come on. Because they want you to go, oh, look at this terrible story. This could potentially impact me or my family. So they play straight to the negative bias. So we have to know that we're looking for negative news. And when we know that we're looking for negative news or we're looking for a negative approach to our own lives, we start to understand the apparatus that we're given. On a recent Zoom call with some students that I'm working with, one gentleman who is coming through his own journey on stress and anxiety said, yes, you know, I'm feeling quite well and the last few weeks have been quite good, but I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. So as you start to recover and you start to become more competent of noticing how stress impacts you, noticing the anxiety, noticing you've been drawn towards the negative news and you start to calm down, still in those early stages, you'll think, mm, this feels quite good at the moment, but I'm sure there's something lurking around the corner. But the more you practice, and the more you continue on this course, the more you will start to establish a way of being that instead of worrying or leaning into the negative bias, you start to just lean into the present moment. And instead of worrying about the future, you engage in the present. So we can't stop the negative bias. We're hardwired to survive. It's within our DNA, but we can notice it, be aware of it, take the breath before we act, and then make a truly thoughtful, cognitive decision, and then act. And that can change so much in the context of how we interact with the world and also how we deal with macro stresses in our lives. So the issues that might impact you, your company, your community, your country or the world can sometimes become quite overwhelming. But actually, if I notice that they are negative news, and that's triggering my negative bias. 
I can then ask myself a question. Can I influence or control this piece of negative information that is making me feel unpleasant? And if the answer to that is, no, I can't, well then quite simply, that piece of negative news is for somebody else. It's for our political leaders, it's for the government, it's for the board of directors within our company. If I can't actually have any direct influence or control over that negative item, I need to remove it from my horizon because otherwise I just allow the negative bias to worry about something that I can't influence and control. And really, it's not effective use of my time. So it also helps for us to label the thing that we notice that we're worried about. So as we label it, so maybe as the world passed through COVID-19, we might be labeling it and going, hmm, COVID-19, that makes me feel really unpleasant. Now let me look at it. COVID-19. Can I influence and control COVID-19? No, I can't. So in the macro picture, I can't worry about it. I can take it into a micro position and I can think, well, I can influence and control the likelihood of my own body or my family being infected so I can take action there. But in the context of how it might impact the economy or the world or my job, Many of these things are just simply topics that I cannot influence and control. So I must notice it, name it, then question, can I influence and control it? And if I can't, then I must move it to one side and look at what's in front of me that I can influence and control. Understanding the negative bias and why it's there helps us to start to notice what we're being drawn to which is quite likely something negative in the news or in our environment. And then as we get closer to it, just questioning, can I influence and control this? And if not, then it's for somebody else.